And now we'll talk about electric current. Electric current is defined as the flow of electric charge. So think of electric charges as moving from one place to another. And the most common example of electric current would be electrons flowing through a wire. And this happens in every electronic device that you've ever encountered. A small flashlight, for example, has batteries in it and electrons come out of the batteries and flow through the wire and through the light bulb and make it glow and then back around and back into the other end of the battery. And in an electric heater, electrons flow through the, through the heating element and make it heat up. Energy from those electrons gets converted into heat. In your toaster, the same thing happens. And in the wiring in your house, the power company has, um, has power lines strung up all over the state and electrons flow through those lines and into your house and then they flow through the wiring that runs through the walls of your house to the electrical outlet in the wall and then anything you plug into that outlet um, has an electric wire that, that plugs into the outlet and electrons flow through that wire into the device whether it's your TV or your blender or whatever you use they all involve the flow of electrons and that's electric current and with that in mind let's talk about a simple circuit think about a battery and some wires and a flashlight bulb and you can draw this in we'll draw a little battery like this this might be the kind of battery you use in your flashlight and it usually says something on it like 1.5 volts and there's usually a little plus sign at one end and a negative sign at the other. And we'll talk about that in a minute too. And suppose you hook a wire up here. And you run this wire over to a light bulb, which might look something like this. This is a little, this, uh, this should be a cylinder, so I'll draw it that way. I'll draw it kind of curved. And there's a little piece down at the bottom. And then another wire connects here and runs back to the battery like that. And then the top of the bulb is this glass section and what happens the wire actually runs up through the bulb and then goes through this part called the filament here which is usually a coil and then back down to the bottom so there's this complete complete circuit the electrons can flow through the wire through the bulb and then back to the battery in a complete path and I'll draw a picture of the bulb here a little bit larger so you can see what's going on inside the bulb. This is the, the bottom part that typically screws into some kind of socket. That's usually made of metal. And then the, the globe up here is made of glass so that you can, so that the light can get out. And then inside the bulb, there's this wire. One wire is connected to the side here and it runs up and one wire is connected to the bottom and it runs up and then in between there's this thin wire in this coil and that's called the filament and that's where all the light is produced and you when you hook a wire one wire has to touch the metal side here you could touch it anywhere and one wire has to touch the bottom here and electrons can flow in one wire and they go up this wire through the filament and down the other wire and back out. So there's this continuous path. But when they go through the filament, they bump into the atoms in the filament and cause them to shake. And remember when we talked about heat and we said that heat is simply the vibration of atoms. So when those electrons going through the filament bump into the atoms and make them shake, it heats them up and it gets really, really hot. And it gets so hot that it glows and produces all of this light. And that's the shining of the bulb because of the electric current. This is an example of a simple electrical circuit. And there are three things that show up here that show up in any electric circuit. And you can take note of these three things. Every electric circuit has these three parts. A source of power. In this case, it's the battery. Although it could be a generator or something that produces, anything that produces the electricity, some kind of power source. It has a complete closed path. And the term circuit refers specifically to that, a complete closed path. In this case, the wire makes up most of the circuit, 
although both the battery and, as you see, the bulb are part of the circuit as well. The path runs along the wire through the bulb and then through the battery. There's this complete closed path through which the, the electricity flows. And then third, there's what we call a load, something that uses the electrical energy. In this case, it's, it's the light bulb. But every electric circuit has those three things. Usually there's a fourth thing in an electric circuit. Usually there's also a switch. And you can think of the switch as just a part, section of the wire that can be opened or closed like, closed like this. So there's this, you flip it open or closed. This is the way it's commonly drawn, although physically it could look very different from that. But this captures the essential aspect. This little diagram here captures the essential aspect of the switch, and that is that it either allows the current to flow or it doesn't. If you imagine the electrons cruising through here, and they're trying to trying to go along this wire, they can't get through. They, they, they can't get past this point right here because there's nowhere else for them to go. The electrons can flow through the wire, but they can't flow through the air. And so they don't flow. The circuit doesn't have electri electricity conducting through it if the switch is open like I've drawn it here. Now if I close the switch, if I take this section and I move it down so that it's like this, then the electrons can flow flow through. So here the switch is closed and this terminology open and closed is a common terminology but it, it the, the meaning is reversed from what reversed from what you're typically what you typically think of the meaning. If a door is open you can go through it or if the road is open you can drive along it. If someone closes the door you can't get through it or if if the road is closed you can't drive down the road reverse the meaning of that for the electric circuit. If the switch is closed, like you see here, that means the electrons can flow. So closing the switch closes the gap and the electrons can then move through the wire without interruption. If the switch is open, and it looks kind of like an open door when it's open, the electrons can't get through because the electrons are trying to move along the wire and they can't get through the open gap right there. So if the switch is open, then the circuit is tripped or it's, uh, the electrons don't move through the circuit in that case.